-hmm. when I showed up, that's kind of when I knew how different season two was going to be. I walked into this new studio, which we were very far away from last year, and just kind of got big starry Christmas eyes. Like, we get to play in this playground now. Mm -hmm. It's bigger, it's more colorful. I think that's my main thing. Like, everything is more colorful this season, which, you know, the comics have such an iconic color scheme that I'm really excited to put it in a new medium this year. <laughs> Season two. Yay, we're in season two. Um, Power Division is uh, having a little bit of a hard time keeping up. You know, Retro Girl's gone, and so relationships, relationships get reshuffled, and turns out that Dina and Cutter are paired together, and they're going to try to do their best to do business as usual in the absence of Retro Girl, and business is kind of hard when Cutter's around. <laughs> So we'll see uh, how they deal with the distractions. That first interaction with, with Dina and Cutter in season one, you know, nice chin pubes. Their relationship <laughs> is always a, just a little off-center of professional. <laughs> and so the longer they spend together, uh, I think the, the farther away from professional they might be tempted to get. I think that's all I can say about that. I think there was a lot of Dina chasing Walker to figure out how they could work together. and uh, in, Season two, I think it's about them figuring out how they need each other. Uh, without retro, girl, without retro girl, Walker's in a, he's like kind of lost, can't find his way uh, in in life, and I think he finds himself needing Dina both professionally and maybe a little bit personally to find um, to find his footing again. So it's about these two puzzle pieces trying to find a way to come together for a bigger bigger cause. Trisha's character brings out. Uh, Dina's complicated relationship with authority. She's, Dina's got this love-hate the relationship with authority. Like, when she has authority, she loves it. And when other people have authority over her, she hates it. So uh, she's got questions about Trisha's character's intentions for powers division, and, and that's gonna complicate things a lot. In season two, especially in the first two episodes, the, the theme that, that Bendis gave us all is no one can be trusted. In, in the absence of Retro Girl, it's such a shocking event that it's like, maybe you did it, maybe you did it, maybe you did it. I don't, it, it's, it's one of those things where to lose someone in the world kind of rips the rug out from underneath you and nobody trusts anyone. So uh, they've got to they've gotta climb out of that. In season one, it was all of these new elements, kind of like a recipe, getting thrown together and sometimes you have a plan for, for a relationship and you get the two actors together but, and this other thing over here is popping. So I think what we've learned from last season is that there's a lot of golden places that we maybe didn't realize before. So we get to go digging in other areas. But I think what's also exciting uh, for Dina is to see her have a different reaction to powers. Especially in season one, she wasn't really enamored with the powers world, like, oh, you're a celebrity, you fly, whoop de for you do. <laughs> um, but for super shock, we get to see her, I think, be, um, be enamored of, of someone with that much power and that much weight. So that's, that's really been fun. Callista is such a sly one. You don't know if she's going to be good, you don't know if she's going to be bad. So I think, and they also haven't written that part. Um, so I know for me, looking at where they come from, there's going to be a deep amount of distrust, you know, and it's like, let's see what the little girl does with the powers, and I think Dina's reaction will depend on what Calista does. Well, we get to spend more time with Dina and her father, which I'm very excited about. A lot of her ambition and uh, moral center comes from watching how Waldo uh, lived as a police officer, so watching her deal with his legacy on her back, watching her react to him trying to be like him but not like him at the same time, and uh, whether or not she can trust him. Mm -hmm. Again, back to the theme, who can you trust? It's the deep amount of distrust, nobody knows anything, and pressure. Uh, this kind of throws Powers Division into uh, a worldwide stage, right? This huge hero is dead, and you guys are on the hook for finding out who did it and bringing justice, so it puts them under a lot of pressure, and there's this tension between Powers Division, local, and the FBI, which kind of comes in and says they're there to help, but again, can you trust that? So it's 
highly pressurized. It's kind of like working in a fishbowl. Whose dream isn't it to be in the superhero world? And actually, I, I don't know, maybe I'm weird, but I was really excited to play a person who didn't have superpowers because I feel like in so many of those stories, we spend time with the superheroes when they're saving the world. And then you see like the human person on the side of the box going, oh my gosh. And like, it's interesting to me how we would deal with that, knowing that there's these people who can do amazing things and trying to build up your own confidence and be like, I'm amazing too. How do you, how do you survive in a world like that? So yeah, it's too fast. Say it's bigger, it's more public. You know, one of the things we learned from season one was that it, it got so intense among these few <coughs> characters and what they wanted. But this year, it's about the global repercussions of a major hero dying. So we've gotten to incorporate more of the relationship with the media. So, you know, we've got a new character who represents uh, what the media sees. And Dina and Walker kind of get to fight that, that public persona to go do things that are important in private and the, the tug and pull is so much fun. There's one, there's one scene, uh, without giving away too much, there's one scene where, uh, how do I say this, the media uh, pushes Walker's buttons. And so, you know, we had those stories where famous people, when they feel like their private space is, is invaded, you don't know how they're gonna react. And, Walker, Walker gives one for the ages. <laughs> I just feel really grateful that we get to touch people and, and take them out of their lives for a little bit and then send them back into their world with like some joy and excitement, you know, take over. I love it. <laughs>